Okay, I'm rolling tape. This is our Professor McAllister. I'm here with Dr. Lovell, uh, PhD in mathematics. Where from? Where did you do your graduate work? Uh, the CUNY Graduate Center. Where did you go before that? Oh, uh, let's see, SUNY Purchase okay. and Westchester Community College. Okay, so we're here. What is your thesis statement here? This is our second discussion on Einstein's theory of relativity, yes. and perhaps you may have some counter arguments to it. Yes. So let's briefly describe what we went over the last time. Okay, so the, well, the last time we determined that there has to be a stationary reference point to the universe. Okay. So it's not relative velocity you know, with respect to one's eyes. Mm -hmm. It's absolute velocity relative to the center of the universe. Yes. Okay, so because go ahead. With that argument in mind, uh, the twin paradox gets fixed mm -hmm. and the Lorentz contraction um, hypothesis gets fixed. Okay. It fixes both of them. Now, when you say fix, what do you mean fix? Uh, the contradiction is fixed. Oh, the, okay. the paradox is gone, it got answered. Wow. It is rectified. Okay. The flaw is now gone because we now have a stationary reference point to the universe and not to the observer. So are you saying this is a fallacy or? Yes, the true yeah. paradox is a paradox because it's a flaw in the theory in my view. Okay. And the flaw, see they, relativity, you know, uh, measures distance relative to the observer. Mm -hmm. But that, that raise, that's not good. You know, it's distance relative to the stationary reference point to the universe. Okay. That, that's gonna fix the twin paradox, and also Lorenz transformation. Now, have you designed some kind of mathematical equation to describe this? Because it's experimentation just, is not possible at this point, right? Huh? Experimentation. Can no, this be experimented? They've, they've already done it. Oh, really? They okay. They've proven relativity left and right. <laughs> okay, okay. But they just, you know, it got, it got fucked. I didn't start, I, I, you know, didn't quite get it right, I don't think. Oh, okay, so because, why don't you, go ahead. Because I had a physics teacher once, yeah, when right. I was at SUNY Purchase. Yes. And one of the things he told me regarding relativity is that because the universe goes on forever and ever, mm -hmm. there's no way to determine relative, what's moving relative to what's not. Got it. But the universe does not have to go on forever and ever. Oh, you say it's, it could be finite? Yes. Because, As, yes, the universe is finite. There are only a finite number of galaxies in the universe yes. before the universe repeats itself. So in order for it to be finite, there has to be some type of boundary? It is, no, there's only, yeah, it's, it's, the boundary is that uh, if you take off going in a straight line mm -hmm. for, let's say, 15 billion light years or whatever it is, Yes. You will eventually came back to where you started from. Oh, okay, okay, that's so, quite interesting. Yes, <laughs> I know. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Well, the infinity sign sort of um, depicts that, doesn't it? I what, guess. What, well, why don't you write the infinity sign on the board and see? Well, the it's what, right yeah, there. that's right. Eight. Yeah. But the universe, you know, it doesn't like if, if you think of the universe as being a pink three sphere. Mm -hmm. That was the model I had before. Yes. Uh, so, I, let's see if I can write this. this is some, yeah, let's uh, demonstrate. So, uh, I'm going to write it. Uh -huh. Okay. So, you can think of this, right? Uh -huh. That's like, sort of like an apple, right? That's Yes. So that's what a pink three sphere is. Okay. So and uh, this is you know a three, the three dimensional boundary. This is a three dimensional boundary. Okay. So what we're looking at kind of is sort of like the three dimensional surface of a four dimensional ball. Okay. That's a three sphere. Okay. So three D boundary. Right, so, and this, uh, that's, this is a supermassive black hole right here. Okay, like right. a singularity, perhaps? A singularity. Okay. This is like a huge singularity, right? Yes. Um, that accounts for, let's say, 99% of the mass of the universe. That much, that much, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So everything just compresses at that point? Right. So, okay. yeah, right? So, in other words... So, basically, this object is so heavy compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. It's so heavy that you can't move it. Is that right? Okay. Super, right? super that, dense. Um, yeah, it's so heavy. There's so much mass in here that it cannot be moved. Okay. So, if there's any motion in the universe, it's not going to be that singularity. It's going to be everything else. Co got it. Okay. So, everything else moves relative to that singularity that doesn't move. So, you, can you consider that dark matter? No, it's the supermassive black hole. Oh, okay. And this singularity, that's the stationary reference point of the universe. Uh, so let's and get back to, So let's get back to a counter argument. Let's get back to Einstein's theories. Yes. It's not a counter argument, it's a, it's a modification. Oh, okay, okay. The, the Einstein's theory of relativity is correct. Okay. In a way, it just needs to be modified. That's excellent. The, He'll be proud of you. Okay. Yeah, the laws have to be reconsidered, not thrown out. That's awesome. Because it's been experimentally proven. Yes. You know, they proved yeah. time dilation with half lots of pi on beams. Yes. They proved it with like the mass increase of particles of a cyclotron. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, you know, a cyclotron rotates particles at close to the speed of light. Yes. Do you know they have to hike up the magnetism to account for the mass increase? Okay. Right? Because if they don't, the particles are going to fly off of the out of the cyclotron. So you increase the ma the magnetic the field. The magnetic field, or you know, the whatever it is that's pulling it together. Okay. Because the, is the particles are going to become supermassive. So could that be described through Maxwell's equations? No, no, it's 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 uh, a different it's, type. Uh, this is Einstein's. Well, Einstein, you know, says he did this. Okay. M equals m naught over the square root of one minus. B squared over C squared. That's yeah. mass increase. Yes. So, if, oh yeah. And um, if I, I said to him, I said, oh, you make sure you're cash He said, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, uh, you know, you know, I, um, you know, I like, you know, relativity is like a fascinating subject. Is It just seems that the Lorentz contraction uh, theorem leads to a contradiction. Wow. And he said, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess he might have agreed with me, you know. Well, if folks out there don't know Michio Kaku, uh, he's a world-renowned nuclear physicist. Physicist, right? yeah. At, at CUNY Graduate Center? Yes. He, yeah, he teaches there. That's yeah. where I went. Yeah. I, well, when I was in the city, I had several conversations with him, but um, I was never at that level of his, you know. But oh, yeah. Any, anyway, and plus he's into science fiction as well. Okay. And parallel universes and um, super string theory. Hey, that doesn't have to be science fiction. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Relativity is not science fiction. Is that right? Relativity is a science. It's a fact. Yes. Because it's been experimentally proven all over the place. Okay. So why don't we just continue where you left off the last right. time? The last time I proved that the stationary reference point of the universe is right here. Okay. In a supermassive black hole. Yes. So anything moving relative to that black hole will be moving. Mm. Right? So here's the stationary reference point right here. Okay. So now I realize that you know, the speed of light is not relative to the observer. Okay. It's relative to the stationary reference point. Okay. So here's my setup. Okay. Yes. Let's see the setup. This is my experimental setup. Could I erase it? Erase it? Yes. And then I'm going to pause for a second to, for you to get back after you draw everything, okay? Just say yes. Just a second. Here. Okay. All right. I'll keep rolling. Go ahead. So here's a spaceship, right? Yeah. Yes. So here's a spaceship going, you know, going um, to the right close to the speed of light. Okay. So me is essentially C. Okay. And here's another spaceship, you know. Uh, going to the left at V is uh, roughly the speed of light. Okay. Relative to the stationary reference point. Okay. So we're not talking about velocity relative to the observer anymore. That got thrown out. Okay. It's velocity relative to the black hole. Yes. The stationary reference point. Yes. Now, and so anyway, how fast, this is, so this is ship A, right? Mm-hmm. And this is ship B. Right. 
So how fast is ship A moving with respect to ship B? It should be moving at the same speed, right? Speed of light? Yes. No. Why not? It's because this is going this way, the speed of light. Right. And this is going in the other direction, the speed of light. So what, what are you saying? Do they cancel each other? No. What happens? Ship A is going to be moving towards ship B. Right. At roughly twice the speed of light. Wait. Yes. Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah. But aren't they moving towards each other? They are. How's that possible? Well, this is moving uh, to <laughs> the right of the speed of light. Yeah. And this is moving to the left of the speed of light. Okay, continue. So <laughs> this, okay, this is going to be move A is going to be moving toward B. B, yes. At close, at two times the speed of light. The velocity vectors add up. Can you draw vectors to, to take a look at it? Remember the magnitude vectors? Yeah, the, the is right, that possible yeah, to, to draw like a right? Is it a right triangle vector? No, it's, just, it's, a, it's a straight line vector. So it's a, it's a supplementary angle, 180. Right. Uh oh. So if I do this. At 180? Yeah, at 180. Right. A is going to be traveling toward B okay. at two times the speed of light. Can you prove that trigonometrically? You don't need trigonometry. It's just it's oh. this simple. It's physics. Okay. Right? Yes. This A is moving toward B at roughly two times the speed of light. Okay. It's hard, it's hard to conceive of this. Yes. For real. That, that breaks the light barrier. How about B approaching A? Is this twice the, the speed? Same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. They, they approach each other. They approach each other at two times the speed of light. Hit the speed of light this way plus the speed of light the other way. I mean, if you're in a car, right? Yeah. You're in a highway. Yes. You're going 60 miles an hour this way. Right. And the other car is going 60 miles an hour in the other lane like this. Right. How fast is car A going past car B? Oh, they both add up to a certain yes. degree. 120 miles an hour. Yes. Okay, I kind of see that. That's a good so example. See, yes. That's so a see, very practical example. Yes, so 60 miles an hour plus 60 miles an hour means they're going past each other at 120 miles an that's hour. That's incredible. They add up. Yeah. You made a, that's, that's a very practical example. Yeah. As opposed to dealing with spaceships. Yes. Okay, continue. Okay, now here's another thing. Right, so we have that. Yes. Now, so let's say both of them are traveling, let's say, like 99 one hundredths of the speed of light. Okay. So let's say this is 99 over 100 C, and this is also 99 over 100 C. Mm hmm Okay? Right. Now, they're both uh, traveling at the same velocity. Right. That means they're both in the same relativistic reference frame. Yes. That means that one is not traveling to the future relative to the other. Okay. They're at the same speed, so they're at the same... Um, time dimension? Yeah, they're at the same time dimension. Okay. They're traveling through time at the same speeds. Okay. So the, the, they're both going to be traveling in the same reference frame. Yes. That means that if you have an observer on the ship, here's a person on, on the ship uh, A, right? Okay. And here's another person on ship B. Okay. So person A, I mean person A is going to see person B move regularly. Okay. He's just going to move with ordinary speed. You know? Right. Right. His motion is not going to, he's not going to freeze, and he's not going to be moving at 100 miles an hour. Right. Because if you go, if you're, you know, like you're somewhere close to the speed of light. And you're and you're soaring into the future. Mm -hmm. They're going to see everybody else slow down. Move no speed up. Speed up. Really, really, really fast. And you right. slow down. And you slow down. Yeah, they they will see you right. be suspended in time. I mean, they'll see you motionless. Yes. Yes. So, right. Yes. You're going to be like frozen. Right. That's the whole idea about time travel. Yes. Is that like an hour for them will only be a second for you? Yes. Because. You, right? Yes. But if they're both traveling at the same velocity, then they're both moving normally relative to one another. Okay. That means that it's, it'll be possible for an observer on the ship A, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say he throws a baseball. Okay. 
So he's going to throw a baseball like this way. Within the ship? Yeah, in the ship. So he's throwing a baseball. Well, he's like maybe outside. He's outside of the ship. Okay. But he's a move with a regular normal speed, just like you and me. Right. So he has a baseball, right? And because his, his speed has not been speeded up or slowed down, he can just throw a baseball like this. He can throw it at the speed of light. Wow. Because his movement is not going to be sped up or slowed down. So, so everything is additive, right? In yeah, terms of his arm, his it, arm. It builds on each other. Right, it's like right. it's like a inductive argument. Yes. This is like this is proof by induction. Okay. So he's moving at the speed of light from left to right. Yes. Because he has regular average velocity, like you and me. Yes. He's gonna throw a baseball, like if he were like better than any a gun, he throws he shoots the baseball out of the gun. And when he's going to throw a baseball at close to the speed of light this way, yes, he can do that yes, because his velocity is not slowed down or speeded up. Right. So his velocity can also be the speed of light. So if he's traveling the speed of light this way, and he throws a baseball at the speed of light away from his spaceship, mm -hmm. then you know, he, that, those velocity factors will also add up. Yes. And the speed of light... So this baseball, right, you know, the speed of light plus the speed of light, this baseball it is going to be traveling this way at roughly... Twice the speed. Twice the speed of light. Right, along with the spaceship. Yes. Okay. You know, you know from the spaceship, the spaceship is traveling the speed of light. Right. The baseball is traveling the speed of light from the, away from the spaceship. Yes. So that the, the baseball can be traveling two times the speed of light from space. Yes. Relative, only relative to you. So if this is going to 2C and you're still going at, at C, right? And guess what? The velocity vectors are going to add again. Okay. Right. Oh, oh no, time you're going to get 4C. No, you're going to get 3C. <laughs> okay, okay. C okay. is improved okay. by induction. Right, 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 right. So I get you. this thing, the, here's the baseball. Right. You know, here, here's you, right? Right? Mm -hmm. And this baseball is going to be going past you at roughly three times the speed of light. Yes. Right? I got that. Yeah. So, so that's called a three set. Now, let's say that we fit, like, maybe this is not a, space, a baseball, maybe this is a jettison. Okay. So, there's like, uh, like a ship that jettisons off on a big ship. Yes. So, let's say we put an observer on that ship. Okay. So the observer should see you traveling at three times the speed of light past him. Right. But then, let's say you jettison a ball off of your ship. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, and then, so you jettison a ball off, or, or jettison a ship, right? But because, you know, so now, uh, this guy, right, is going to see you basically traveling with smaller velocity, so you'll actually be even quicker. Yes. So you you still you know, so you're gonna be moving very fast compared to the guy who jettisoned off. Right. It could be like three point five C? No, four C. Four C now, okay. Because you see you will be going very so then you jettison a ship off. Mm hmm You know, with, with close to the speed of light, mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm So then we have so then the ship, this ship is gonna be, you know, uh, roughly two C. Right, because this, this, the mothership is this way at the speed of light. Yes. The shuttle that jettisoned off is also at the speed of light away from the ship. Yes. Because the velocity isn't slowed down, it's speeded up. Right, right. So then, you know, C plus C, that's 2C. Mm -hmm. And if there's a person on that ship, right, on, on, the, jet, on the shuttle, yes. on the jettisoned ship, then 2C plus 2C is going to be 4C. Okay. And it's going to build on that inductively. Yes. So if you're moving, you know, like relative to the stationary reference point, mm -hmm. so it's possible for you to travel, like this goes on forever. So you can be going like, you know, like um, you can see another ship, right? Mm -hmm. Going like at 100 times the speed of light toward you, right? Wow. Good. But that's only if you're moving. See, the laws of, you know, the speed limit of light only stays that way if you're not moving. 
Right. But if you are moving, right, I got it. Then it doesn't really apply. Right. Right. So nothing travels faster than the speed of light, but only if you're more or less stationary. Yes. But if you're not stationary, if you're the one that's moving that's, the speed of light, that's right. Then it's not. Then you can do better. Yeah, you yes, can do, I you got can it. Go faster. Is this something that that's inherent in the speed of light? That yeah, it, it adds cumulative inductively. Uh, it, it, the only thing that's inherent in the speed of light is nothing travels faster than the speed of light past you, only if you're stationary. Okay, so let's look at let's look at the composition of light. Is it, I, I've heard in my studies in physics that is a wave particle. Is a wave particle. And what's the other component of it? It's a, like, a, like a photon. A photon and a wave particle. Yes, but it's a wave in what? Yeah. You know, it's a, you know you can't, is it a wave? Because an ocean wave is a transverse wave in the water. Yes. So what's a light wave? That, that's also a transverse wave, right? That's right. Does, shouldn't there be a medium? Of course. I would think. I oh, that thing. Yeah, a carrier. The medium of a light wave. It should be the medium. Okay, so are they moving perpendicular to each other, the photon what? and the wave? Or is the photon vibrating to create the wave, a wave? No, I think it's like to create a light wave, you have a charged particle, and you like do this with it. You vibrate up and down. Yes. And that just like a ripple in a pond. It's the same thing if you take a stone and throw it into a pond. Yes. It's going to give a transverse wave in the water. Right, but the stone is what created it within that right. medium. Yes, and that was just the effect. Yeah, I guess yeah. The way, like, yeah, but I don't think it's photons. I mean, they're created like, um, like I think like if a part of some type of particle, you know, loses energy, mm -hmm. that energy is given off for the, as a photon. I think. Yeah, you're looking at the energy band, aren't you? Right, yes, the, yeah. the, the atomic structure. Oh, right, right, or the, the uh, electron right, shells. Yeah, an electron, and an electron absorbs a photon of the right energy, then it, it, it gains energy and it goes to a higher shell. Right? So, so if it goes to a higher shell and it moves towards the ground state, it's going to give off more energy. If it moves to a higher shell, it takes in energy. Right. But if it goes to the ground state, then it'll give off energy. Which is uh, enthalpy or entropy? Could you bring thermodynamics into this? It's quantum physics. I, I don't know about thermodynamics. Okay, okay. Unfortunately, I only took like, I took like, you know, I didn't take like, I didn't go on to advanced physics. Okay. So unfortunately, I, I never, I, I like to read the gravitation book, you know? Yes, yes. It's, but it's 1,200 pages, just chock full of equations. Yes. Very condensed. Yes. So why don't we proceed to this, or rather than to digress further? So this, this, yeah. is what, uh, this is what I want to say. Okay. Let's say here's uh, observe here's here's ship A. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's ship B. Mm -hmm. Now let's uh, so let's say that ship A, there are, these two ships are approaching each other. Yes. At let's say a hundred times the speed of light. That can be done because they're both moving. Yes. So ship A, um, let's say ship A is like you know, um, like, like um, I don't know, hundred light years away from ship B when they start. Right? Okay. Okay. So ship A is a hundred light years from ship B. Okay. So because they're coming together at close to the speed of light, mm -hmm. I mean 100 times the speed of light, they will hook up in a year. They'll, they'll meet each other in a year. Okay. So they basically, you know... Um, it's almost like moving back in time? Not moving back in time, but they're moving superluminal. They're moving faster than light. Okay. So when they meet each other in, in a year, they got a mechanism so that they'll connect and they'll stop. Wow. Right? So they will have, they will have traveled, you know, um, like a hundred like they will have traveled a hundred light years only a year. Right? Yeah. Right. In terms of like, you know, so um that means that it is possible to travel faster than the speed of light. Yeah. Because they, they travel, you know. If they're traveling at 100 
trying to speed light rail into one another. And they start off 100 light years apart. And they meet each other in just a year. Mm -hmm. And when they meet each other, they come back to the universe. Okay. Then they travel basically 100 light years um, you know, in, a, in a year. So in other words, they travel faster than the speed of light. That's incredible. Understood. Yeah. So, you know, you know, with Lorenz contraction already taken into account. Mm -hmm. So that's the proof that it is possible to travel faster than the speed of light. If you use this, with, you know, but only if you're moving. Yes. But nothing is really moving. I mean, in terms of atomic particles, right? You Everything is vibrating. We're, we're talking about spaceships. Yeah. Yeah. But that's incredible. But but so what you're saying is that we are within some bubble that's constantly moving. Nothing is really stationary anyway. No, well, but, no, but but you're inducing movement in this spaceship. Yeah. Right. So and you're moving so fast. But the only thing is that an observer who's stationary mm -hmm. will not be able to observe you anymore. Got it. Because you're traveling faster than the speed of light relative to the stationary person. Yeah. So if the person can't observe you, then in, in a sense you're no longer in his universe. That's amazing. So you've actually tunneled out of his universe. So could it be considered a parallel universe? I'm thinking, I'm thinking more hyperspace. Hyper, okay. I'm thinking like space-time, fourth dimension. Hyperdimensional, yeah, hyperdimensional. Hyper well, well, yeah. So, I mean, let's take let's take a look at a point. Just draw a point. That's the point. No, <laughs> no. do it here, right? Do uh -huh. it right there. Just draw a point. Okay. Now we're gonna go from one dimension, two dimension, third dimension, and the fourth dimension, right? right? So why don't we just extend it this way? Okay. So that's one dimension. Now, for, now, in order for us to pull this plane down, yeah, we have let's go back to the center. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pull it down and draw the line. Pull it down. Like yes. Yeah. Because you just pulled it down, right? Okay. And and everything closes on this side. Oh, so mean, close it. What do you mean close? It? Close it. Yeah. Close it. Close oh, it here. Are you playing this? Yeah. Oh, a like square. A square. square. That's two dimensions. Okay. Okay. So we we had the point. Yeah. We went to the middle. We went to the, the point line. to the line, but we no. had to we had to come back. We had to come back okay. to bring this down. Now, why don't we go right here again? Come up and go here. Yeah. And pull it out. And then we get a cube. Right. Yes, you get a cube. Yes. We get a cube. Yes. That's amazing. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah. What I'm thinking, right? See, see Lorenz's contraction, right? Mm -hmm. I have another theory that Lorenz's contraction is actually three-dimensional. Okay. And I proved that with the atomic, with the pendulum clock in space. Mm -hmm. So Lorentz contraction is three dimensional. So if you're moving relative to something that's not, mm -hmm. it's going to contract three dimensionally. Right. And if the the guy who's not moving sees you moving relative to him, yeah. you're going to expand three dimensionally. Right. Right. But if you expand three dimensionally. Who's to say you can't expand four dimensionally? That's right. Well, that'll, that'll be our next that'll, move, that'll right? Be a hyper cube. I mean, won't that be our next move? Yes. We got That's that. a three cube. Right. You uh, want me to draw a hyper yeah, cube? Yeah, for yeah, you? yeah. I'm going to show you what a hyper cube looks like. Okay. There's basically a cube inside of a cube. Yes. But you know what it is? That's its projection onto our universe. Correct. So you can't see a hyper cube the way it is. Because that they, it exists in four dimensions, you can, we, we can't see four dimensions. No, but we can see its projection onto our universe, the mm -hmm. three dimensions. But then again, we're trying to draw these geometric figures on a flat board. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's that's, flat. That's what topology is all about. Yeah, it's a study of surfaces in higher dimension. Yes. So, so let so let me see. Are you uh, so after the cube? Is a four cube. We, okay, so first, first we we finished off point, line, uh, no, pl a plane, plane, a square. Cube, yeah. you, you go back into the middle of the plane. Yeah. You pull it out. You get the cube. Right. Now, should we go back in again and pull it and pull yeah. it somewhere? A, a four cube is yeah. a cube within a cube. It's hard to draw. Yeah. I don't really like the drawing. It's very difficult to draw. I know, I know. Well, I'm going to draw. I mean, it's hard to draw, you know. Yeah. All right, let's draw it and then we'll come back to you. Let me take a pause, okay? So what I'm thinking, right, is we have eight space. We've got ten dimensional space, super string theory. Yes. You probably have a hundred dimensional space, et cetera, et cetera. 
So if there's a limit to how fast you can travel through three-dimensional space before you travel through four-dimensional space, right, through time, yes. maybe there's a limit to how fast you can travel through four-dimensional time. Well, as you're speaking, right? <laughs> before, yeah. I'm, my mind is looking at not even differential equations, just the basic calculus and, right. and derivatives. Yes. Why don't we just do a little derivatives and then we'll continue this because it's, getting, it's getting highly complex. I have no let's idea. See if, I'm just talking, I have no yeah, idea. I'm just, I, I don't know. Let, let, come on. Let's go back to basic derivatives, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All, right, all right. Let's create a function. Yeah. Okay. Uh, f, y is equal to f of x, uh, x. Uh, just, right. Um, it's equal to x squared. Yes. Okay. The de okay, so why don't we just take the derivative of that? That's two x. Two x, and let's take the second derivative of that. That's two. And then, if, and what? And what if you take the third derivative? That's zero. Okay. Okay. Zero. <laughs> okay. 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 Now let's do the reverse, the inverse process, and integrate. Integrate. Okay. Go so ahead. The well, the integral of zero uh, is is x, I think. No, the, no, no. The integral of zero would be anything. Yeah, some number c. C. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have to be true, it could be anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's... So so okay, now let's 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 do x to the third power. First derivative. Yeah. That's x two. So first derivative. Yeah, f prime of x is three x squared. Right. Uh give me the second derivative. Six x. Right. The third. Six and the fourth back to zero. Right. So these are called influence differential. There's a name for this. There's a topological. There's a, a name for this mathematical analysis. Influence differential, I think. What is it? Influence dif differential. Yeah. Influence differential. You just right. differentiate and take the derivative forever and ever. Right. 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 So, how does this brilliantly? Is there any relationship between this and topology and this? Oh, the topology, yeah. The topology generalizes the, the spaces in general. Okay. The topology is like you have a map from some space to another. Yes. Like in the, the universe, the way I see it, right, is not quite a three sphere yeah. and it's not quite a three torus. It's something <laughs> in the middle of it. Okay. okay. It's like halfway between a football, a three sphere and a three torus. Okay, why don't, we, why don't we just draw x squared on the xy plane? Let's see what it looks like. Okay, let's do it. Okay, a parabola, right? Yeah. Okay, now, what, what was the 2x, the first derivative? That's 2x. Okay, and the 2, a constant, and the 0. <laughs> okay, let's do this one. The what? x cubed. x cubed? Right, right, right. I just want to see it. Okay. Yeah. X2. Yeah, I don't know if it has any relevance, but we'll That's see. That's X2. Okay. The first derivative. That's 3X squared, so. It's a parabola again, right? Yes, it's okay. like this. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, give me the 6X. 6X. And the 0. But you got to have the 6 first, right? The 6, yeah, yeah, the 6. Right, That's the 6. And then the zero's here. The zero's there. Yes. That's an infinitely differential function. So it goes on... You know, it's fascinating that they should create a mathematics like this. Well, I don't that, that was Leib Leibniz, Leibniz, Leib Leib or Newton. Who did the calculus? Oh, was that oh, the, Isaac Newton or yeah, Leibniz? Yeah, before it goes back. Calculus, I think, goes back to like the 15, 1400s. Wow, it goes back a long time. Wow. I mean, algebra goes back like a thousand years ago to the Arabs. Yes, Hindu Arabs. Right. Yeah. But well, this is fascinating. So I guess there's really no relationship between this and, and the hyperdimensional space no. that you speak well, but, about. You no, know, but you know something? You know what I'm thinking? See, the, there's a limit to how fast you can travel through four-dimensional time Okay. before you start traveling through five-dimensional time. Right. And there's a limit to how fast you can travel through five-dimensional time sure. before you travel through six-dimensional time. Okay. So six-dimensional time would correspond to like six space. Okay. Right, five dimensional time would be five space. Right. So five space is, is like hyper hyper space. Right, 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 right. And then right. you know, and yeah, and it's like you know, 
that's the whole idea about like the unifying field theory. You know, has to do with that. Yes. Yeah, yes. You have you know hybrids. You have four space, five space, eight space. You know, uh, Minkowski eight space, H whale ten space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if we were to exist in those there are dimensions, many, yeah, but, yeah. our bodies couldn't take it. I mean, yes, they're just no. physical bodies. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be like uh, you know living cause for me to for us to live in four dimensions. You'd have to, it would reveal who we are in the fourth dimension. Right. It would reveal our bodies and all in the fourth dimension. Right, right. Right? And what do you think we would look like in, in, our, in the fourth dimension, right? That's true. I mean, it could be like, yeah, I'll be, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, you know, there might be extensions to myself that I don't even know in the fourth dimension. Correct. Why or, not? Or, or maybe you could do it by location and be in two places at once. At once. Yeah. Like, man, you know what I'm thinking? What if my brother died, you know, let's say 2018, mm -hmm. when, you know, I, I'm just saying, right? But uh, went back to the time was reincarnated as me. Right, right. Then he would be a four dimensional extension of myself. That's right. That's so right. if I were to live in four dimensions, I'd have me and my brother the same, you know, we'd have the same, we'd be one person. Right, right. I, I, mean, I don't know if I would want to do that. No, no, because, <laughs> because, no, because you don't want to lose your identity. Right, I'm not my, my yeah. idea. Right. So I mean, that's what I think, right? Yes. If there's a speed limit, you know, to how fast you can go through space, Yes. there should also be a limit to how fast you can go through four-dimensional time. Correct. Before you start traveling through five-dimensional time. And then there's a limit to how fast you can go through five-dimensional time before you start traveling through six-dimensional time. So what you're seven, saying seven. is that each of these dimensions has their own sci limit. scientific laws? Yeah, it has their own, their different own laws speed limit. within it. Different laws within it? Yes, yes. And, so I, and you're trying to express this with this three-dimensional, finite, physical right. space. Right, there's a limit, you, yeah. you know, to how fast you can travel through space before you start traveling fast through four-dimensional time. Right. But remember, there are many, there are like infinite dimensions of time. Yes. There's only three dimensions of space. Right. Oh, right, but right, right. infinite dimensions of time. Got it. Yes. Got it. Got it. So four-dimensional time is probably a little bit to how fast you can go through that. Yes. Before you start traveling really fast through five-dimensional time. Right. And there's probably a limit to how fast you can go through five dimensional time. Wait a minute. Before are you, you start traveling uh, through six dimensions. So are you seven. saying there's, there's a di direct correlation between space and time? Yes. Why not? Okay. I mean, they're, they're almost the same thing. That's why a lot of physicists call it space time together. Wow. So, more than but you put more emphasis on time, though. Well, in terms yeah. of moving to these different dimensions. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that. The and not space. Of, yeah. If there's a limit to how fast you can travel through space, then there's probably a, a, a limit to how fast you can travel through four dimensions. So why time? time? Why time? What is time? Because time is the fourth dimension of space. That's what, according to Einstein, time is the fourth dimension. But, but that's where the relativity comes in. Yes. Because my time might not be the same as your time. Okay, well, if we're in the same velocity, then it is the same. Okay. So I'm sure there's a limit to how fast you can travel through four-dimensional time, just as there's a limit to how fast you can travel through space. So if you had to describe time with another word, what if time wasn't in Webster's Dictionary? <laughs> can you find another word to describe? time? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, is there a synonym for time? Uh, I don't know. Energy, maybe? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> Energy. That's yeah, well, interesting. Space, That's interesting. Maybe. Yeah, know, yeah. Right? Well, maybe we need to look at the word time in other languages. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Arab, you know, maybe other... Russian. Okay. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to know what it is in Russian, Ukrainian. Right, The right. Slavic languages. Yeah. Spanish. Well, in Spanish, is tiempo. Yeah. Now, if you're dealing with music, there's oh. time in music. You could have oh, Beethoven yeah. and Chopin. Yeah. So you count with time. Okay. You know, and there's different type of meters in time. Three, four, time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or oh, four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. But then I could speed it up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or oh, slow it down. Yeah. One, okay. two, three, four. Oh, yeah, one, right. Two, three, four. One, two. Yeah. So wait a minute. 
There's different temples to time. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. you're saying. Well, the well, temple. Well, I said the different dimensions. I like the three dimensions of space. Yeah. And there's probably, you know, infinite number of dimensions of time. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing that happens in music with rhythm and meter. You guys know. They, they're just infinite. Right. Time. Because yeah. You can talk about, you know, you ever heard of Minkowski 8 space? Yes. Collusion Klein 6 space? Yes. 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 Space? yes. That's 10 dimensional space. <laughs> Yes, eight I'm, space is eight dimensional space. I've heard of it. Clues of Klein six space. Yeah, six dimensions of space. Wow. So like eight space. That's three dimensions of space and five dimensions of time. This is incredible. That's eight space. We're gonna have to end it right here. Okay. Because it's just like it's too much for me right now. Yeah. So we'll continue. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Lovell. No, yes. No okay. problem. All right.